Godzilla is now in New York City. Monster Zero One and Zero Two, commence the attack. Listeners and welcome to another episode of Stomp This Way. Today's a big day. We're concluding the Gamera franchise with Gamera the Brave. Are y'all all excited to be here? Oh, you know it. I know yeah. Gamera's ready to get. Or, I, know, <laughs> I know Dylan's ready to get this over with. Gamera. I am now a giant turtle. <laughs> <laughs> Gamera might be ready to get this over with too. <laughs> but anyway. Like I said, we're here to review Gamera, The Brave, which came out, which was, uh, it's been about 15 years since it came out, the last Gamera movie. Means it's about time for them to make another one, I think. It's coming soon, I'm sure. And I was like, please God, no. (laughs) But, uh, the original Japanese title, again, I've seen this translated two or three different ways. The book that came with the Gamera collection from Arrow Video translated it as Little Braves Gamera. I saw it translated as, I think, Little Heroes Gamera. Um, There was another one that was like, I don't know, Little Bravery or something Gamera. (laughs) But uh, something uh, along those lines. And a little bit of production trivia. I didn't find much, but in 2002, Dai was bought by Katokawa, which is a big media conglomeration over there. And they decided, all right, time to bring back Gamera. So they were like, we're going to kind of go back to the roots of a child-friendly Gamera. We're going to try to reboot Gamera with this little movie. Unfortunately, this movie underperformed at the box office. And so any sequels they were planning were tossed out the window. <laughs> but, Dylan, you asked this question, I think, during the we were watching this. How many turtles did they use to, to film the live-action Real Little Turtles when Gamera was uh, young? Well, the answer is 13. 13 different African spurred tortoises were used to portray little Toto. They, with a CGI face. And with a CGI <clears throat> face, and I said, and they painted on the little the little symbol onto his stomach. There no were, turtles were harmed to make that movie. No turtles. Probably were harmed, but... <laughs> 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 there were 3,000 extras used in the film. A lot of extras. It's a lot of extras. Yeah. And this is the first gamer film to be shot on digital. So, moving into the modern world. <laughs> but, anyway, a little bit of box office. This movie was released on April 29th of 2006. And, according to the Wikipedia, made approximately $2.6 million. Which, I mean, didn't we say the last one made like $15 million in 1999? Yeah. So, uh, yeah, a bit of a flop. <laughs> Maybe people just didn't care about Gamer anymore. I know, right? It's kind of surprising, because, I mean, we'll talk about it, but, uh, yeah, it kind of surprises me, honestly. But, well, I mean, you know, by this point, <laughs> maybe the Japanese audience was just fed up with these giant monster movies. I mean, they had just got the end, the uh, quote-unquote end of the, the Godzilla franchise two years earlier for which like also, the 19th time. Which also flopped. <laughs> and then, you know, two years later, this came out. They hadn't seen a, a Gamera movie in probably, what, 10 seven years Seven years more? by that point. Okay, mm-hmm. seven years. They were just tired. They, were they like, said, screw it, we don't care about these care. giant monsters anymore. Don't care. Well, maybe, but we are going to listen to the trailer, and then we're going to come back, read off the cast and crew, read off a plot summary, and then we will discuss the final film in the Gamera franchise. See you in a bit. Alright, we're back. This film is directed by Ryuta Tasaki, written by 
Yukari Tetsui, music by Yoko Ueno, effects by Isao Kaneko and Hajime Matsumoto, and starring Ryo Tomioka Kaho. She just has one name. Yeah, I guess she's cool. (coughs) (laughs) Kanji Suda, Toshinori Sasaki as Gamera, and Mizuho Yoshida as Zetus, or Zetus, or whatever. Hmm. Yeah. In 1973, an older Gamera sacrifices himself to save the people of a local village from attacking Gaios. 33 years later, a survivor of that night, Kosuke, has a son of his own named Toru. Toru discovers a small egg containing a turtle on a local island and takes it home to keep as a pet. But it is soon evident that this is no normal turtle as it shows the ability to fly and grows to the size of a full-grown tortoise in a matter of days. One day, the turtle, named Toto by Toru, goes missing, and that same day, the human-eating monster Zetus attacks the city. Toto, now nearly 40 feet long, arrives and saves Toru and his friends. Toto defeats Zetus but suffers grave injuries. The government captures the injured turtle and tries to force him to grow to full size before Zetus returns. They are successful, and when Zetus returns, Toto takes him on to save the city, but Toto is still outmatched, and Toru rushes to his giant friend's aid as Toto takes a brutal beating. Eventually, just as Toto seems to be beaten, Toru is able to feed him the red stone the boy found the egg sitting on, which imbues Toto with new power that allows him to defeat Zetus. In the final scene, Toto flies off into the sky and Toru acknowledges him as Gamera, as credits roll. For the final time. For the final time. Hopefully. For now. For no, now. not hopefully. Not hopefully. Okay. All right, so... Well, kind of. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to fight you. So this film starts out with a flashback to uh, 1973. 1973. That is... The yeah, year of our forefathers. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my. The year of our actual fathers. <laughs> um, <laughs> and we see, a, you know, the, I guess, first Gamera. I don't know if he's the first Gamera. We see an older Gamera. And Gamera. And Gamera. Yeah. We see an older Gamera fighting some Gaios and... He's getting beat up pretty good, yeah. And he uh, he self destructs to to kill the Gaios, and we see a little boy, boy blows himself up, Mike. He go boom 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 boom, and we <clears throat> see a little boy watching, <clears throat> and then it kind of transitions uh, to 2006, and this little boy is now a 40 year old man and staring yeah. at the ocean. Yep, and uh, we quickly establish he has a son named Toru, mm-hmm. and his wife has passed away. She got in a car accident. I I, I they say. This will be his first summer without her, so within the last year. Mm-hmm. And so, you know, he's reopening his restaurant, and they're trying to trying to move on with their life. Yes. And, you know, I think it's... Um, I'm going to go ahead and say uh, what might be a controversial statement, but in terms of human characters, this is by far and away the best gamer movie. Uh, yeah. We oh, have yeah. a strong central character... That this movie actually revolves around. We have character arcs. What? Yeah, we have inner character relationships. What? We have trials and tribulations that the character has to deal with. What? And I'll say that I think the acting, even on little Toru's part, is pretty good across yeah. the board. There's no one. Is this a, is this allowed? I know. Right? I know. None of the kids. I don't find any of them excessively annoying. I think that little Ryo Tomioka has some pretty good emotional moments that he pulls off. So, you know, congratulations uh, congratulations across the board on that. Good for these people. Um, but yeah, so Toru, he's, you know, he's very, obviously, he's upset about the death of his mom. And he's, yeah. Uh, there's just like in that first scene when they're visiting his mom's grave, dad's like, she's watching over you from above. And he's like... She's just My mom's not in heaven. She's just ashes in this box. <laughs> <laughs> a very like, you're like, dang. Wow. Very uh morbid act. child. Yeah, yeah. Very boobly He's not believing honest. in afterlife, apparently. <laughs> and, you know, he, he tries to hide it because when his friends mention something about his mom, he gets angry for a second, but then he tries to like, you know, laugh it off. Yeah. And it's kinda sad. But he uh he finds a little little turtle egg on a giant red stone on an island off the right off the coast. Little turtle hatches from it. Yeah. And, yeah. Uh, he takes it home, and at first it just seems like a little normal turtle, which names it Toto. Names it Toto. 
But uh, the next day, it starts to fly. Yeah. And has grown slightly. Yeah, and he has this neighbor that named Mai, who's, I think she's a couple years older than him. Yeah. She is but, uh, terminally ill. She's not Finally. terminally ill. She's not terminally no. ill. She she's, has a heart condition. Heart she's got condition. A, a life-threatening heart condition that she's going to have to have surgery on. That terminally we ill. Learn throughout the <laughs> film, and... But yeah, she also sees it. And yeah, something that I really like about this film is this theme they have going that he's this little boy, you know, he's he lost his mom. So he's he's terrified of of losing anything else. And so, Mm -hmm. you know, throughout the film, he's he's afraid that his dad's going to take little Toto away. And then once Mm -hmm. he figures out the whole thing that's going on with Toto, he's afraid that he's going to blow himself up to save people and he just doesn't want Toto to die. And he's also has this friend across the street. Who's sick or whatever. Mai, who's, he's learns is sick and she's having to have heart surgery and she's afraid she's going to die and he's afraid she's going <laughs> to die. So, he, you know, it, it, and I think they do a pretty good job of establishing like he's he's lost, you know, probably the most important in his person in his life at, at, at that point. Yeah. And so now he's, you know, he feels like he's just losing everything. And he's trying to hold on to everything, and then you know his relationship with his dad is strained because of this. Mm-hmm. And you know, characters actually have to go through things. I, I actually I think it's pretty good. You know, I wow. <laughs> I, I I read a lot. I, you know, some some other people review this movie, and they and they say things like, you know, the the human plot may you know wear on you depending on who you are. But I'm actually kind of surprised that people say that because, like I said, I think in terms of writing characters i think like i said by far and away <laughs> the best camera movie not yeah. even not even close pretty much um, oh, yeah. i don't know if you guys will agree with that actual <laughs> plot was in this yeah they movie. actually have a strong cent- like a central plot that they follow from beginning to end you know the those other gamer movies and the, the heisei gamer movies which you know I, I love those movies but i mean you know the human characters are just just, <laughs> just there i mean that last one like we talked about revenge of virus had passable human characters yeah. but for the most part those human characters are just there to move the plot along and espouse the exposition and you know that's this it. movie is <laughs> definitely i would say more about the characters than it is it's more character yeah. driven um and this one yeah like you said it's <clears throat> it's a lot more about this little boy and then gamma is also in it <laughs> so you know we we have all this and and then i think the first fight comes about um it's about halfway through the movie i think about what i would say i think about 45 so minutes 45 into minutes. the movie when Zeta shows up and we have our big fight in the city. And, you know, I mean, we'll talk about it as we go through the effect sequences and everything, but I will give the Heisei Trilogy this. I do think the Heisei Trilogy did the monster stuff better. I think their monster fights were just staged better and everything. But the monster fight here is fine. And we see Toto get, you know, he he's able to run off Zetas, but... In the process, he gets, you know, really hurt. And so the government takes possession of him. And there's these little, there's these talk, let's talk about these little red pearls that were found after the first gamma blew up. Mm-hmm. And so I guess they're like grinding these up into liquid form and injecting <laughs> them into gamma, hoping that he'll like grow to full size. Yeah. Which he does, I guess. And then it really is only about, what, like a 10 minute gap between the first fight and then when the second fight starts. So, I mean, kind of, yeah. The second half of this movie has a monster fight going on pretty much the whole time in the background. I mean, you know, except for maybe like a 10 minute span. <laughs> but yeah, so they get into the fight again, and then we have, you know, the whole sequence where Mai figures out that the uh, Redstone needs to get to Toto. Yeah. And her, mo- his, her mom calls. Toru and tells him that she keeps talking about this red stone and yeah. so him and his two little buddies go and they're gonna get the stone and take it to Toto but you know the monster fight's happening and they've moved Mai out of the hospital so you know he's running and around and his dad's you know chasing him down and yeah. um, but we have you know I, honestly I mean it's kind of cheesy maybe it doesn't make much logical sense but one of my favorite scenes in this movie maybe the kids passing off the baton it's when yeah they they the red stone mice tries to get up and take it but this little girl sees her struggling so she takes it and then we had this montage of for toto of little kids handing it off to each other as they hit a roadblock and saying for toto and it's it's really moving it really cuts back to the uh gamma being the friend of all children thing and here it's really the all f- children are the friend of Gamera. But no, I I, I don't know. It, it, like I said, it's kind of cheesy, but I really like that scene. 
It's for Toto. It's for Toto. And yeah, for so. For Toho? For Toho. <laughs> and then, uh, you know, eventually Toru convinces his dad to let him go up the building. and I'm gonna go see Gamma. Because to- Toto's being thrown into a tower by this point. Yeah. And they're twin towers. <laughs> mm. <laughs> and uh, Zetus is climbing up the other one to get across, but Toru gets up there and. As poor Gamera's sitting there being stabbed by Zetus's, uh, or Toto is getting stabbed by Zetus's tongue over and over, Toru sits there and has to give him this big speech about, about how he doesn't want him to die. Doesn't want him to die mm-hmm. until he finally throws him the red stone to eat. And I guess the red stone <clears throat> gives him more power, and, you know, he turns on his little jets and he does his little spinning fly thing, and then he eventually blows Zetus up with a, with a fireball. Because Zetus has C4. And Zetus, just like a classic Ultraman, they stuff oh, yeah. that suit full of C4, and it goes, not probably not really Z4, but it goes boom, 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 and a uh, pretty explosion. And then we have a scene where, you know, the kids, like, block, block the government trucks from getting yeah. the camera. they want camera. And, then, and they're like, go, 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 camera, you have to get out of here. Yeah. Camera takes off flying. That's mm-hmm. right. And then in the final shot, little, little Toru, Toru is like, sayonara, camera. <laughs> And then we cut to some song. Some song. And I love, like, you know, like, sometimes when, uh, a lot of times in movies, you know, they'll have, like, the, I don't know, like, the outtakes or whatever playing as the credits roll. Yeah. Uh, This one has this, like, you follow the baby. The the baby. baby Toto. Yeah. yeah, As he's walking through the city streets or whatever. It's kind of funny. That is Gamera the Brave. Dylan, what'd you think? How was it for us as as a concluding chapter for, for Gamera? No, actually, I, I thought it was pretty decent. I, you're 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 very very right. This is uh, probably the best characters we've seen in the Gamera movie. They actually have some substance. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, is that even allowed? <laughs> I mean, I'd say the main like point of this movie is that Toru has to learn to essentially move on. Yeah. Yeah. And you know, just you know, kind of pick his bootstraps up and just roll with it. And that's uh, you know, at least, like we, we we got some character development. Yeah, yeah. He, he gets there, yeah. which is nice for a change. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I don't think the monster action is staged very well. I think you're right. It's kind of it's kind of clunky. Uh, mm-hmm. We can talk about it a little more in effects, but yeah. it's it's very much just kind of, especially in that final fight, very much just like them kind of throwing each- themselves at each other. Just yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and then one of them gets stuck in a building for a few minutes. But other than that, it's not bad. No. It's much better than I thought it was going to be. Yeah. Yeah. And, you know, they talk about this one kind of going back to being child-friendly, but it also has some darker moments, like when Zetus eats a bunch of people, and then you see his blood-stained teeth, and, yeah, you know, the, of course, the themes of loss and everything. That the I, guy in the ocean getting ate, and yeah, the blood guy, all spurting. Yeah, Jaws-like, where the guy gets dragged <laughs> in the water, and then the blood comes floating out with the life jacket. Mm-hmm. So, you know, not too child-friendly. But, yeah. 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 Y'all ready for creature design? Sure. So, first, we see old camera. And he looks very much like like a real tortoise. Yeah. Like, not like a, mm-hmm. we've taken inspiration of a turtle tortoise type thing and turned him into a giant monster. Yeah. This mm-hmm. literally looks like a tortoise with tusks. Like a tortoise standing yeah. upright with tusks. And he, you can tell that he looks old, like they've mm-hmm. given him Made like, him look like the old wise tortoise. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, he, we also see Gaios in this scene, and they they look quite a they look gold. They're they're I don't know if it's just the lighting, but yeah, they and but the the one scene good shot you do see of the one burning, it does look a lot like the Gaios from the Heisei trilogy. Might be some leftover props in a couple of shots. <laughs> yeah. And then of course we have, you know, first Toto hatches from the egg, and he's like an, like an actual you know he's an actual baby turtle tortoise. For a while. And then he gets a little bigger, still an actual tortoise. And except for then, the little CGI face. Except for the little CGI face and the little painted on his, uh, symbols on his tummy. And then he, when he turns into like like a regular sized tortoise, it's a, it becomes a puppet. It's a puppet little. Mm-hmm. I think it's an animatronic. Still little looks thing. like a like a tortoise. Yeah, and then of course you know he. Then he becomes big. Bigger and you know I, he's very. He's more friendly looking. He's more child friendly Gamera. Yeah. He's yeah. not as aggressive, not even as aggressive as, you know, like the Showa era films. Yeah. He, he, he's he got very rounded features. Very giant puppy dog and eyes. And big old puppy yeah. dog eyes. Green eyes. His tusks are very 
are a lot smaller than they usually are. Mm-hmm. Um, he's got like this light brown skin tone instead of the dark gray. Yeah, he's very s- softened, I guess, which is fine. It's definitely not my favorite gamer design. It's, it's okay. The, the biggest issue I have, though, is not with his design, but with the roar. So they've taken Gamera's Classic Roar, which we've had Gamera's Classic Roar, you know, with slight modifications here and there from the first movie all the way up through Revenge of Virus. Here they, for some reason, have replaced it with mainly the 76 Kong Roar with other sounds. Like I hear elephant sounds mixed in sometimes. Elk sounds, for whatever reason, are mixed in from time to time. And then I think, I think at one point there's even a TIE Fighter sound effect that they've put in as his roar. So, Gamera's, you know, it's fine. Um, And then we have Zetas, or Zetas. I mean, he's, he's kind of like the giant version. You remember that, the the dinosaur that spits the venom in people's eyes from Jurassic Park? Kind of. He's kind of got that vibe, especially when he folds out his little, like, neck bend things. For a while, he looks almost like a, like, the first time he shows up, his head is kind of reminiscent of a traditional Chinese dragon. Yeah. Yeah. Um, But he's, like, got, like, weird, like, Mm -hmm. things coming off of him. Mm -hmm. And then, yeah, he's he's got the spines that open up on his side, like a fan. Yeah. Opens up on his his head. Yeah. Yeah. Neck region. Neck region. Yeah. And he's all right. He's got a a tongue that mostly CGI that, like, shoots out. Until it's not, briefly. Yeah. And shoots out and stabs It's purple. And it's purple. We also forgot to mention that Gamer shoots fireballs, and they're pretty cool. I guess he always shoots fireballs. <laughs> but, you know, it's fine. He's fine. He's I mean, he's not right. my favorite... He's not my favorite Gamer villain either. But, uh... Very... Yeah. The weirdness factor is a lot toned down from a normal Gamer villain. <laughs> he's yeah. just a thing. He's just kind of like a walking dinosaur-ish thing. With uh, a little... T Rex arms, <laughs> yeah. With a um, stabby tongue. With, with a stabby, stabby tongue. tongue. <laughs> <laughs> but I like Gamera. You do like Gamera? I do yeah. like him. He's, he looks he's very cool. friendly. Yeah. And cutesy and bubbly. He's, yeah, he's fine. He's not the worst design. Okay. Uh, I he's mean, probably the worst, but I still like him. He looks yeah. he looks better like than he some looks of those like a higher production quality. Later, yeah. some of those later show air movies, that suit was looking kind of rough. <laughs> yeah. But in terms of just like the base design, it's probably my least favorite gamer design. <laughs> I think uh, I dig the uh, the Heisei design the best, but we can yeah. talk about that at the end of the episode when we wrap up the franchise. Yeah. So I think <clears> that's <throat> all the creatures, right? Yeah. Yeah. So next we have effects. Effects. I think they're pretty good. I mean, yeah, they're they're, they're not pretty bad. good. There's a, I think there's a lot of CGI and matting compositing shots. Uh, I think most of the compositing shots are pretty good. I mean, yeah, they're it, not bad. It does have some like Star Wars prequelitis things at times where everything is just on a green screen and it just kind of feels fake. But um, I think it looks pretty good, and there's some pretty impressive matting shots and compositing shots. The CGI is it is what it is. I it's think it's right. better than it was in the Heisei era. But, it, I mean, you can still tell the CGI. Mostly when the CGI tongue and then the fireballs, obviously. And then, when, of course, when he's gamers flying at the yeah, end. Yeah, and then there's mm-hmm. a couple, like, shots, like, wide shots of Zidus or whatever. He's yeah. He's walking around and he's kind of CGI. His tail is CGI, especially, yeah. There's one shot that kind of looks bad where they've, like, superimposed... Zetas's shadow as he's swimming underwater, and it, it it doesn't look like it's really superimposed well. But no, I think the model work is really good. Yeah. I yeah, think yeah. Sumation is all pretty good. I, I I do think the fights, like we were talking about, are kind of clunky. They like, feel they feel clunky to me. Like they, it it really does feel like two guys yeah. in suits that not not like in. Like the Showa era Godzilla movies, where like they were like, doing where karate, they're like, like they're like doing like rubber suited wrestling. It literally feels like two two dudes in suits just like kind of throwing themselves, launching at themselves at each other. Yeah, and they're like okay, yeah, it, it, it's not as fun as especially like I said the Heisei era Gamera stuff is. That monster action is a lot better, but uh, I think it's serviceable here. So you know, it is what it is. Finally, we got score score. It's very different from what you would traditionally get from a gamer movie. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I mean, it's not. Yeah. <laughs> it's not the worst. I like it. It's a lot of. I think like I don't know. It feels like Wii music <laughs> for Wii a while. Music. It does at times, and then it gets a little Irishy at times. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and then there, there is a gamer theme kind yeah. of. 
and it's not bad. It's not bad at all. I think the I think the score's pretty. It's a little odd at times, but I think it. I'm like, huh? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> yeah, I, I think it's pretty good I most of the time. I think it's better than the last movie. Was. I don't think it's as good as Kotani's scores, but yeah, you know. it think, doesn't feel like a traditional Japanese monster movie score. It doesn't. No, not at all. But. Uh, much more in the vein of. Like the more kid friendly show of Eric guns yeah. in the movies, like the do 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 do. But there's no gamma. Gamma. No. Gamma. I think it fits better than the X from Outer Space theme. Songs. It is better than the X from Outer Space <laughs> soundtrack. This is true, <laughs> but there are many things that are better than that. So, <laughs> but no, y'all ready for uh, final thoughts on this final film of the Gamma series? Sure, Angel. Would you like to start? Well, you know, it's a pretty good movie. The plot is actually there. <laughs> There's actually some stuff that happens. <laughs> some developments and, you know, people have to overcome things. Mm-hmm. It's pretty good. Mm-hmm. And, you know, effects, pretty good. Huh? You know, the effects on most things, like the models are pretty good. The superimposed things that pop up everywhere are pretty good. And, you know, score. It's all right. It's 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 interesting, but it's not like the worst thing I've ever heard. Mm-hmm. It fits sometimes mm-hmm. for what's happening. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Monster fights, uh, you know, a little lacking in luster. Mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, from what they did were in the other movies, but you know, I can get over that because mm-hmm. they actually have human plot that I can kind of get with in yeah. this one. And enjoy. I think I'm done give this movie an A minus. An A minus. Dylan, what do you think? Yeah. 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 Mm. I actually think that this is a pretty decent movie. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, overall, we have taken a giant leap forward in learning how to write a film in this yeah. <laughs> in this movie yeah. by creating strong centralized characters that you follow throughout the majority of the film mm-hmm. kind of random side characters just randomly thrown about here and there like the uh, one military type guy that yells a lot yeah yeah in a very anime-esque voice mm-hmm. i don't know what what the point of that is but well it's whatever yeah i think they're supposed <laughs> to be like comic relief characters yeah kind of, it doesn't yeah. work but i i really like the 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 kind of arc that we've put this young this young kid on the fact that he's dealing with so much loss and he's worried about losing more people mm-hmm. and he's dealing with that and how he has to learn how to how, how he has to learn how to cope with that and you know build his relationships back and just kind of learn to 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 move on but not forget at the same time mm-hmm. i think that, that that works really well and they've they've actually set up characters that that works really well for mm-hmm. uh mm-hmm. for once in their in in their careers <laughs> well these are all new people working on this movie to be fair yeah, we don't know what they've done <laughs> but uh i think that the creature design is not bad overall yeah uh, gamma is a lot more bubbly and playful uh once he is you know grown to full size mm-hmm. but i still i still like him i think he's i think he's kind of he's kind of cool the guyos that are in it briefly are right. Old Gamera looks like a giant, tur- a giant, you know, tortoise. Mm-hmm. And then uh, Zedus, he's, yeah, he's yeah. here. Uh-huh. He's not the best thing I've ever seen, that's for sure, but uh, he looks like a giant dragony dinosaur thing. Yeah, yeah. it works yeah. for the movie. I think the effects are, are for the most part, pretty decent. Uh, I would say excluding the CGI, which I- I'll give it a slight pass mm-hmm. because, you know, barring the, the, the time and I assume the relatively not expensive budget of this film mm-hmm. you know it's it's all right i mean the score is uh is, uh, it's, it's odd yeah. <laughs> but uh I'll, I'll give it a pass for that too because this movie actually had good writing mm-hmm. i do think like like we've talked about the the monster action is quite cl- is quite clunky especially at the end of the movie mm-hmm. but overall it's still it's still a pretty fun movie and, and i think it's the movie in the franchise that probably flows the best narratively mm-hmm. With Gamera in it. Mm-hmm. I'm actually... I'll give it a A. All right. Yeah, I agree with you guys. You know, this. I think this film kind of gets a, a bad rap in the fandom, but I don't really know why. I think a lot of people, especially those that are older than us, had, you know, watched the Heisei trilogy as they came out, and then when this movie came out, they wanted it to be like that. the Heisei trilogy, and then it wasn't, and uh, they were kind of disappointed. But, no, I actually think, like we've said... and. Uh, 
in terms of writing, this this I will say is is the best gamer film. I mean, it has a strong central narrative, and it you know our characters start in one place, and at the end of the movie they're in a different place, and they have nice arcs, and I think the acting's pretty good across the board. Um, I think this movie has some really some pretty good emotional moments in it. I like the themes that it deals with. I mean, obviously it's it's a family friendly movie. <laughs> More so maybe than some of the Heisei era movies, but I think it still deals with some darker themes and it has some kind of violent moments to, I guess, spice the movie up. And I like the themes that it deals with and I, I think the characters pull it off well. Like I've said, I mean, you know, I, definitely the monster, anything monster related is probably a step down from where we were in the Heisei era. Zetus is definitely no Iris or, or Legion when it comes to enemy monsters and i i'm not a huge fan of what they've done to gamera in this movie either the design which i think is a big step down from what he looked like in in revenge of iris to to why i just don't understand the creative choice to just use the 76 kong roar which so many monster things just recycle that roar it's just kind of lazy in my opinion why not bring back gamers classic roar the score again i think it's also a step down from Kotani, but I, I think it's pretty good i actually don't mind it at all and effects i mean you know pretty good i mean i don't know if they're quite what they were in revenge of iris uh, i think the cgi is a little bit better but i don't know you know in terms of like model work and just attention to the little tiny details i don't know if it's quite where we were on revenge of iris but but i think the effects work is perfectly serviceable and it gets the point across and you know there, there's a lot of things like i like the scenes where we have little toto like flying around and then the scene in the kitchen where he's just doing hijinks and and then at the end of the movie for some weird reason we have a montage of him traveling through the city as the credits are rolling i think this movie <laughs> balances tone pretty well too yeah. like yeah it it knows what it is mm-hmm. but it's still serious at the same time yeah. like it, it balances its... it know it knows it's trying to be a, an actual you know film yeah and not just the, a children's movie it's yeah. actually trying to be a movie yeah a, a, a you know a piece of, of filmmaking of artwork yeah yeah but it knows that it's a giant monster movie yeah. and it has mm-hmm. you know goofy moments yeah i think they really do a great job of balancing its more lighthearted moments with its darker moments um i didn't really feel any like abrupt jolts and changes in 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 tone in the movie so you know that's a that's a big compliment to the writers obviously but uh yeah i'm gonna give this movie an a as well it's really good i think actually i think you know if if you're a giant monster fan i definitely think it's one worth checking out so you want to talk a little bit about the gamer franchise as a whole so uh dylan or actually i guess we can start with andrew oh boy andrew i mean obviously Mm. you've seen all these movies multiple times but going back to it uh, what are just kind of your just uh, summing up thoughts on the on the whole series? The whole series. Mm-hmm. Well, there's some big ups and downs in this whole series. There's definitely some <laughs> some high lots of downs. peaks and, and lots some of low low <laughs> valleys. <laughs> you know, Gamma Super Monster was one of the worst movies. I think it's one of the worst movies I've ever seen. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Especially... We're just saying thing. something. Just saying. <laughs> we bought We've the, seen a lot of bad movies. A lot of bad movies. Yeah. These two have seen Oasis of the Zombies. <laughs> yeah. Oh. It's not as bad as Oasis of the Zombies. No. I don't think a lot of things are as bad as I've Oasis of the Zombies. I've never seen a movie as bad as Oasis of the Zombies. <laughs> it's boring. I don't know. We tried watching that one movie that one time out of that book that we have and couldn't even get through the first five minutes. We just looked at it and said... No, nah. what was it? I don't know. It was made for like five, like five thousand dollars. Some it looked like a student horror film. We uh, watched. I remember. We watched the Nail Gun Massacre. Yeah, we did watch the Nail Gun Massacre. <laughs> that was a close second. Oh, that was horrible. But we're getting way off topic. Anyway, I know, camera. right? <laughs> <laughs> but you know, there's some good good points in mm-hmm. the Gamma franchise. Yeah. Like some of the Heisei era movies mm-hmm. were pretty good. The one with the Boy Scouts. That was all right when Gamer versus Veraz. Yeah. Scoutmaster mm-hmm. Kevin. Scoutmaster. <laughs> yes. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and you know, the first one was it was not the worst thing I've ever seen. It was better than some of the other K say gamma movies. And you know the other ones uh, were good. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Alright. 
So, if you'd have to say you had to pick your the best movie and the worst movie, what's your best, what's your worst? Yeah. Worst is definitely Gamma Super Monster. Mm-hmm. I don't think there's any other one that could top that one. <laughs> what's the best? Probably the one we just watched. Gamma, Gamma the, the Brave. Brave. Shots fired. Andrew said it. I think this is the best one because it's the best storylines I've ever seen in a Gamma movie and... Even though the monster action isn't that good, but storyline. <laughs> yeah, Dylan, what do you think? What do you think about the franchise as a whole? What is your What do you think, reflecting back on the last twenty four weeks or so? <laughs> oh, he's breaking! He's breaking! <laughs> he's seizing out! <laughs> I've wasted twenty four weeks of my life on this. <laughs> yeah. I I mean. It wasn't as actual garbage as I thought it was going to be. Mm-hmm. All of it wasn't, at least. <laughs> All of it wasn't. <laughs> I honestly would say, as far as the Showa era camera films mm-hmm. go, I don't think, minus a couple exclusions here or there, I don't think that it reaches the heights of the Showa era Godzilla films. Definitely can't I agree think with that. that they are, the, the Showa era Godzilla films are, I would say, more consistent. Mm hmm. Lee good ish films. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> now I will say the Heisei era is much better than the show era Gamera films. Yeah. They were all fairly entertaining, much like the Heisei Godzilla films. I don't. Th- I still don't think they're quite as good as the Heisei Godzilla films, but they 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 definitely hold their own. Mm-hmm. Um, as far as like especially like effects work go in those films, yeah. they definitely hold their own. There's a lot of fans that would say that's shot fire, shot fired too. Because I think they hold their own in some of those movies. I would say. No, I'm saying that shot fired. That you think that the Godzilla movies are better. Heisei Godzilla movies are better than those movies. Oh really? Yeah. I don't know. There was there's some movies in the Heisei Godzilla in the Heisei Godzilla movies that I thought were actually. Pretty solid movies, like mm. like especially like Destroy. I thought that was a really good movie. Yeah, uh, Biolante wasn't bad. Yeah, some other things in there weren't weren't horrible. Yeah, but overall, uh, you know, and then there's Gamma the Brave. Yeah, uh, where we finally, after eleven movies bef- before it, finally learned how to write characters. Yeah, yeah, um, and it works really well. Yeah. So yeah. Yeah. Worst and best. <laughs> Worst, hands down. I mean, th- th- I think this is going to be across the board. Is going to be Gamma Super Monster. That movie's garbage. Yeah, it it should. It I, doesn't even really qualify as a movie. I don't if, think. if I could wipe that from my <laughs> existence of anything I've ever watched in my life, it'd, <laughs> I'd be close to the top. Be of the right list up to go. there. <laughs> yeah, it's a toss up. I think it would depend on the day. From a narrative standpoint, this is hands down the best film in the Gamma franchise. Mm-hmm. But from an overall an entertainment standpoint and enjoyment level and how well it's paced in the action, I would probably say Revenge of Iris. Mm-hmm. Either way. If you had you got to pick one. Shoot me. Right now, just in this moment, which one do you think is better? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> you had to pick one. I don't know. I don't know. You know, you can't say. I don't know. You can't pick one. I don't know. I, they're they're both they're they're good in, in their own rights. They're yeah. they're two completely different movies. I think yeah. I gave them both the same grade. Yeah, so. you did. They're they're different. Yeah, and they're and respectively. Yeah. So. Yeah, you know, just kind of looking back on us rewatching it this time, you know, it, it is very striking that I guess of the if you want to <clears> say there are three different eras of these films. Um, Even though this one's technically packaged with the Heisei era and and yeah. the arrow sets, but I'll say that there's really three different eras, and I'll say that each era has a really distinct feel. You know, the Showa era is very, very you know cheesy for the most part, very child friendly, very goofy, and then you got the Heisei era, Heisei era, which is much darker, more serious. You know, obviously a big jump in production values and. And things of that nature. And then you have Gamera the Brave, which is somewhat of a, a merger of the two. Has, you know, a very child-centric story, but, uh, you know, some of the darker themes and better production values that you would see in, a, in one of the Heisei movies. So, you know, I think it is it's interesting how Gamera evolved over time. You know, I enjoy the Showa era. I agree with you. It's not as, it's not as good as the Godzilla Showa era. I mean... The best Showa era films, which I would say are like Gaios and Varas and and Giron, mm-hmm. are probably mid tier Godzilla Showa era films at best. And then the Heisei trilogy, which we've talked about, you know, it's it's definitely right up there with the best of the Heisei era from Godzilla. Mm-hmm. I I'm with you though that 
I, I know a lot of fans will probably hate us for saying this. I think that there are a couple of Heisei era, Heisei era Godzilla movies that I like just as much, probably a little bit more. And a lot of that probably has to do with nostalgia uh, for Godzilla yeah. more than you know the quality of the movies. But um, and then we have you know here Gamera the Brave, which I think is just as good as anything that came out of the Millennium Era Godzilla. I mean, it's it is definitely like right there with like Godzilla against Mega Godzilla, which I think I ended up giving the best grade out of the Millennium Era Godzilla movies. And I'm in the same boat as you. If I have to pick a obviously the worst one again, Gamera Super Monster, no question. If I have to pick a favorite, I mean, it really is it is a toss up between this one and, and Revenge of Virus. This one has these better, much better human characters, while for Revenge of Virus is is you know marginally better at all of anything monster related if i i'm gonna pick and if i have to pick one i would say i would probably just like it's one a one b i would probably just give revenge of virus i think if you had to put a gun to my head i'd probably go revenge of virus yeah just because it feels like a not necessarily more complete, but yeah. more well-rounded all the way yeah. around the film. Like, the As characters aren't... Kaiju film. Yeah, the <laughs> characters aren't horrible, but the action is better yeah. than Gamma yeah. the Brain. And at the end of the day, we're watching these for the giant monsters, and so G- Revenge of Virus does, I mean, have some of the best monster action I've seen put to film. So, I, I would put it... Like I said, it, it's really like a 1A, 1B situation with this one, and then again, with that one, and then Gamma the Brave... But I think I will put together a comprehensive list, 1 through 12, and sometime in the next couple of weeks, and I will create a page for it on our website and put it there so all yeah. our fans can check that out if they care what I think, which I doubt that they do. But <laughs> anyway. I mean, there might be some people out there. There might yeah. be. I did. There's, there's not much news this week. There's just a couple of things I want to talk about. I did see today, actually, where Mill Creek announced their June lineup for Ultraman and it will be an Ultraman Zero collection. So there's like four different like T V specials and I think like little special episodes and er and movies. A collection of four of those that Ultraman Zero started in that will be released in on June fifteenth, I believe. And then they're also gonna have a Ultra Galaxy Mega Monster Battle collection. Uh, it has a two or three different things on it that they're gonna release on June fifteenth. So that's their that's their June lineup. Don't forget that their Leo still book and Blu-ray comes out in May. So there's that to look forward to. You can find those on Amazon. For I, I looked for both of them on Amazon today. I don't think they have the Mega Monster Battle one up for pre-order yet, but the Ultraman Zero Collection was up for pre-order. Um, the other one should probably be up for pre-order in a couple days. But the other news that uh, was released today is that the Godzilla vs. Kong soundtrack will be released on March 26th. And they released the track list. So, I, I read it. I couldn't help myself. Nothing really spoilery. I won't I won't get into spoilers because I know people. But I, nothing really spoilery. I mean, it kind of maybe tells you, like, where some events might take place in the movie. But uh, it doesn't, like, give away who the winner is or anything. So, you know, that's out there if you want to look for it and find it. But anyway. Yeah. 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 Other Did you than- ever order the... Uh, the uh- like the, uh, like with the, the, uh, <laughs> spit it out. Like with the what? <laughs> like with King of the Monsters, the, like the, the graphic novel thing. Did you ever order that? No, because there's two graphic novels. And I was like, and you know, they're going to be like, I don't know, like what, $20 a piece. And you know, I'm like, yeah, and you is- call yourself a fan. I, like, I, I know. Wasn't really worth it because I, I you know, the, the, the Godzilla Awakening thing wasn't where it was not worth twenty dollars or whatever I paid for it. <laughs> so I uh, think I'll just uh, he calls himself, he calls himself a fan. I'll just man. read the summaries on Cliff Notes or something. <laughs> wow. <laughs> so yeah, I'm a bad fan, but you know what? Oh well. <laughs> if I adored the MonsterVerse, I would probably get them. But since I'm kind of lukewarm on it, I'm like. Oh, I'll check it out. If if they get glowing reviews, maybe I'll get them. <laughs> but anyway, what are we watching n- next week? I think it uh, it'll be a little late because the film does not come out until Wednesday on HBO Max. But sometime next week, we will be getting to you the review, hot off the tails of its release for Godzilla versus Kong 2021. <laughs> are you excited, Dylan? 
that movie's gonna be ridiculous. It's gonna be ridiculous. That movie's gonna be. That's a kind way to put it. That movie's gonna be crazy, <laughs> nuts, nuts, ludicrous. Yeah. But maybe uh, it can be a fun crazy. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Hopefully, hopefully, hopefully the characters aren't actual just hot garbage. Hopefully the characters aren't in it. Hopefully the characters aren't in it much, and when they are, they're not just hot. Maybe, hopefully the credits are like <laughs> starring Godzilla. Kong, and then that's and then everybody. Else. Maybe it'll be as good acting as this movie was. We could if this if, if Godzilla versus Kong was as well written as this movie, I consider it a miracle. <laughs> 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 the difference between this movie and that movie is this movie had like what three or four core characters. Godzilla versus Kong has got like seventy five. Seventy five. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Duh, duh. I mean, I'm looking forward to seeing it. I think it's going to be, at the very least, it's going to be an entertaining film. Mm-hmm. Whether or not it's good is besides the point. Yeah. <laughs> uh, but anyway, yeah, we'll get that out to you as soon as we can, guys. And then after that, of course, we've actually we talked about we're going to kick off the Kong franchise. Kong. Kong. Oh, yeah. So, we got King Kong, Son of Kong, 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 and more Kong. That's right. <laughs> so... Look forward to all that, but if you want to hear us talk about other kinds of movies, Dylan, why don't you tell them about our other podcast? Yeah, if you like uh, if you like hearing our voices and you want to hear us talk about something besides giant monsters, you can listen to us talk about horror movies on our other podcast, Movies Don't Create Psychos. That's right. Uh, we are deep in the depths of the Conjuring franchise for about another week or two, mm-hmm. Yeah, and then we will dive into the Saw franchise. Yeah. <laughs> and hopefully we don't decide to just dive into a saw. <laughs> <laughs> we'll see. We'll see. There are eight, almost nine of those. So, uh, uh, so yeah. yeah. Check us out over there. But as far as this podcast is concerned, you can contact us at stompthisway1954 at gmail.com. This is a true statement. If you would like to follow us on our social medias, we'll be up on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. We're at Stomp This Way on all those platforms. Make sure you give us a like or follow, and be sure to tell your friends about us. That's right. Andrew, why don't you tell them where they can find our website? Well, you can find that website at www.stompthisway.podbean.com. That is an accurate statement that as well. That is true. Oh, yeah. And over there you can find our full schedule of events. Absolutely. Grades for previous films listed on that schedule. That's right. You can find news and updates when I decide to update it. And most importantly, backlogged episodes. <laughs> That's right. But other than that, as always, thank you for listening. I'm Aaron. I'm Andrew. And I'm Dylan. And we'll catch you in the next one.